creepy enough that I was a bit like, oh, I don't want to read that before bed. <laughs> I mean, I am a wuss, so do that. Hello, my loves, and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten, and we're doing another reading vlog that's going to take place over a couple of months. This time, it is the Locked Library edition. So the Locked Library is a book box subscription that I get monthly, it's book only, and I'm really enjoying this book box subscription, but I have got a little bit behind in my reading of them. So I've decided that for this video, we're gonna read three of the Locked Library books. Now I am actually due a new box in about a week's time. So that's gonna be for July, and then also another one in August. If one of those two books I'm really excited about, then I will knock out a couple of these. But the point is we're gonna be reading three of the books from the Lot Library subscription so I can actually catch up. And I'm very excited, they're all so beautiful. So we have here the Valkyrie, which has been, I think it was like the second box. So it's been sitting on my TBR for a while. This one is Norse mythology, it's a retelling and it's gorgeous. We then have the most recent one, which is The Library of Broken Worlds, and this is a YA sci-fi. And then we have this book, which is the book I'm going to start off with, actually, and that's All the Dead Lie Down, and this is by Kari McCauley. Very excited about this one. This one's actually more of a gothic horror haunted mansion. Oh, we're looking forward to it. I don't think it's a mansion, I think it's just a haunted house. But this is the book I'm definitely gonna start off with. And then these two may get read in it or it may get swapped out for some of the new book boxes new book boxes? No, from some of the new books from the book boxes, depending on how I'm feeling. So I'm keeping this one a bit open, but like I said, we're going to be starting off with this one. I'm really, really feeling it. This one, we're following our main character, Marin, and Marin is alone in the world until she receives an invitation from her mum's best friend, and she gets invited to go over to her house and look after two children. Her mum's best friend is called Alice, and Alice is a writer, of horror books, but when Marin goes to this house, she realizes that Alice's children are really peculiar, and maybe the house is a little bit haunted and spooky. I'm really excited to read this one. I have to admit, when I first got this, I was like, mm, this sounds good, but I'm not gonna read it anytime soon. And then Jan read it, I'll have her channel linked below, and she really liked it. So now that's got me going, well, okay, I'll pick it up now then, <laughs> because yeah, I kind of have to. Like, if she says she's liked it, I need to give it a try. But yeah, I'm really, really intrigued. Beautiful cover, amazing sprayed edges, and what is gorgeous about all of these editions is that every single one has some different foiling underneath the cover. So each book has gorgeous foiling on the hardcover. So yeah, I mean, I really like this book box subscription. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, but I wanted to actually get through some of these books. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start off with this one. It's gonna be a bit like my five star book vlog that I did where I was reading books that I thought were gonna be five stars. It did take me about three months to film because I'm not making these books a part of my TBR. They're editions that I'm going to be reading slowly over the course of the month. And that's exactly what's gonna happen in this video. So we're gonna see how long it takes me to film and get through these. Definitely gonna be reading three of them, starting off with this one, and we're gonna go on from there. I'm really excited. I hope you enjoy this video and I actually need to rush out and meet a friend. So I'm gonna go and we'll catch up with you once I've started this one. I don't actually know when I'm gonna start this one. Probably should have thought about that before I started filming this, but I got so excited. I literally came up with this idea yesterday and I was like, right, I wanna start it straight away. And it's like, I'm still actually in the middle of a lot of different things, but it's started, it's happening, and I hope we're gonna enjoy it. So, thank you for joining once again. Hope you're all doing really, really well. Let me know what you've been up to, what you're reading, and I will, of course, catch up with you soon, very soon. After this update, I need to pack 
because I'm going off on holiday. You would have already seen that vlog when I'm off to Edinburgh, because obviously this is coming out way later. Also, if you can hear a dog barking, that is the neighbour's dog. I think he's been left on his own. So what normally happens when he's on his own during the day, he starts barking like a mad one. Enough of all of that, let's actually talk about the locked library book. So this is all the Dead Lie Down, as we know, and I'm now up to part two. I actually really like that the parts are broken up with this black page. And on this page, you get a quote from a classic author. So on this one, it's Mary Shelley. On the first one, it was Emily Dickinson. And then underneath that, you get a quote from our author that's in this book. So Alice Lovelace, who writes horror stories, and you get a quote from one of her books in here. Now, obviously we're following Marin, and I think I already gave the premise of that Marin is now at the Lovelace house because her mother's died, she needs somewhere to stay, and Alice Lovelace is like, well, your mum was my best friend, so, you know, come, come join. You can look after the kids, it's in exchange for board and food. However, the more we're reading of this book, the more I don't think they were very good friends, or they were, and then something big happened to make it so that they're not close anymore, because of the little things that I'm picking up on. Alongside that, you do have Marin looking after these two children, really are crazy. <laughs> No, they 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 love to do pranks, but their pranks are dangerous pranks, and one of them even endangers Marin's life, and it's really quite weird and twisty because of that. And then we have the eldest sister arrive called Evie. She's been away at school. She that's where she was staying. Her sister Ren sent her a letter, and so Evie came back. And a lot of this book is exploring grief. So everyone at Lovelace house has lost someone and so they're all dealing with grief in their own ways and this book is exploring the different ways that grief can come out so you have everyone dealing with it in their own peculiar way and I'm really enjoying that it is eerie but it's also really easy to read not that it being eerie is bad like one of the good things about this book is how eerie it is like the atmosphere is really there and I'm really enjoying it and alongside that you have the fact that this is really easy to read. The font itself, like the typography of it all, is really, really nice. Like, it's really easy on your eyes. And that makes me feel really old, saying that. But it is it's so nice to read, especially because the last couple of books I've been reading alongside this have had tiny weeny writing, and it feels so much more dense. Whereas this is really nicely spaced. The chapters aren't too long either, so it's a really nice, quick read to get through. I should say how many pages I've read. I've read 122 pages and it didn't take me long. I did it in like two sittings. Originally I was going to break this book up and read 20 pages a day but I was enjoying it so much that I knew I wanted to read past that amount each day. So yesterday evening instead I just binge read 80 pages and I loved it. It was really really good. This book has a lot going for it. I think it's exploring some really interesting themes of grief. It's doing it in a really eerie way. There are some really unusual creepy things going on in this house and it's handled really well and the way it's formatted makes it for such an easy read. It is a YA book and I do feel that and this is an interesting topic because a lot of people do say, oh, I'm too old for YA, or YA is not as good, and I don't actually believe that. Yes, there's a difference between a YA book and an adult book, not just in its contents, but I think in the way it's written. So for me, YA books generally are a more fun, easy time to read. I find books like this to just be something that I don't need to focus really heavily on. Like, the writing is accessible, it's easy to read, and that is something that I like to break up all of the heavier books that I read. This is not talking about every single book, this is just me saying in general I find YA books a lot easier and fun to read, like a YA mystery or something like this one's a YA thing, it's like a gothic thriller, but I do, I find them so much easier to read, I don't have to focus as much on them and I definitely enjoy that in a book. And then you have adult books where I feel like there's so much more going on that you need to pay that much more attention to everything that is going on. Plus, generally speaking, the topics can be a little bit darker in tone. But like I say with this one, like there's still themes that you're looking at within this book. It's just done in a more easily readable way than I sometimes find with adult books. That probably made no sense. And I do wonder, that is a good question actually, do you actually feel a difference when you're reading YA and adult books? 
I know YA is marketed towards a younger audience. Do you feel there's more than that to it? Because it's not just our main characters being older, because you get some adult books where the main characters are younger, but they're just dealing with so much more. But I do find it's in the writing itself as well. And while they won't, on the whole, stick in my memory quite as much as an adult book will because I am a sucker for some beautiful prose and gorgeous dialogue and all of that. However, they are harder to read, like it's slower for me to read and get into and I will tend to find myself coming away from it more whereas not every adult fantasy book is like that or every adult book is like that. A YA book I find I can just sit there and eat it up and before I know it I've blinked and 100 pages have gone. This is just a generalisation that I'm thinking about mainly because the last two adult books I've tried reading are very dense and this has been like a breath of fresh air for that. That was a really weird tangent, <laughs> I'm sorry. But overall, so far, I'm really enjoying this. I'm really intrigued to see where it's gonna go. At this moment in time, I can say I don't think it's gonna be a new favorite. Like I haven't been tabbing it. I haven't felt the need to tab it, but it's been a really nice one that's broken up my TBR, like for the month reading to break up with this book. So I think it's gonna be definitely an easy one to finish up. Although I won't be reading it for the next few days because as I said, I am going on holiday and I'm not taking this one with me. So I'll be reading this one when I get back. But yeah, this is this is not going to take me long. I'm about a third of the way through and yeah, this is this is going to be so easy to fly through and I am intrigued to see where it's all going to go. Also, this is another book that makes me feel, is it supernatural? Are we going to have some supernatural elements or is this more in their mind because it's how they're processing their grief? and they're seeing things that aren't there or making a bigger deal out of things that aren't there. Understandably, it's a creepy ass house. So you have this house that's been in this family for generations. They have some weird traditions as well. And alongside that, you have a horror author writer who is horror author writer, horror book writer, anyway. But she has some very much like, don't disturb me when I'm writing. And she seems very standoffish and things, but then don't forget she's just lost her husband. So of course she's gonna feel cold and that to approach. So I feel like there are some things that have happened that seem really eerie. Also, another part of me is going, are we just seeing this more as an exploration of grief and there's nothing really supernatural? Me sitting here right now, I want there to be something supernatural, but I feel like there isn't going to be. So we're going to see how that goes. So that's my prediction for this book, that there's going to be nothing supernatural, but I would love it if there was. But it is definitely a book that kind of is a bit open to it at the minute in this first part for you to decide how eerie it is. We definitely know everyone's keeping secrets and Marin doesn't know what they are, which is really frustrating her because she feels like she's not a part of this family if she's being kept on the outside. This is what I mean, like there's a lot of sub themes in this book that can be pulled from it, but at the same time, it's still such an easy read that you don't have to pay attention to those if you don't want to. It could just be a spooky gothic time and that's fine. Or you can look into it deeper. I rambled on for 10 minutes, almost 11 minutes, and I still have to pack. And I know that's why I'm rambling for so long because I don't want to pack. So we're gonna go to the other vlog that's gonna come out before this one. I will update you when I've read a bit more. I might update you again at another part or I might just do it as I finish. We'll see if there's any, like if I've got some really particular thoughts at the end of the next part of what I think maybe this will happen in part three, I'll do it. However, I do want to try and keep this spoiler free so if any of those ideas end up being spoilers then I'll cut it out because I don't want to spoil it. I feel like me saying it could be supernatural is not a spoiler because it's left ambiguous enough that you have no idea. I need to stop rambling, I need to pack, I need to actually do things with my day and I will catch up with you probably in a week or two's time once I finish that book and then we'll have to choose another book. Stop the rambles Kirsten, need to pack, we need to stop procrastinating.
at the end of July, it's actually the last day of July today, and I have finished all the deadline down. So I finished this last night and I was really thinking about it this morning about what I wanted to say with this book because it was a good book. However, however, this is not a new favourite book and I think I had quite high expectations. So I started reading this, I'm not sure if I mentioned it already, but Jan, who I'll have linked below, she recently read this book. Uh, she read it in June, absolutely loved it, and it's one of her possible contenders for the top 10 of the year. And I was really looking for it, I was really looking for that spark that made me go, oh yes, that is a new favourite book. I wasn't finding it though, and I don't know why. It's not a bad book, and this is where I then get stuck with, well, would I reread it? Potentially, yes. Thrillers aren't something I'd normally reread, to be honest, unless they're exceptionally good ones. I don't tend to reread them. Mystery is a completely different matter. I love a YA murder mystery. They're just fun, entertaining. This had all the atmosphere that I really enjoyed. It was dark, it was creepy, there's like animal horror in this, there's hair horror, there's there's a lot going on, there's bones and stuff, like it's a whole thing. And it did creep me out, which made me go, why am I reading this before bed? Like, why did I do this to myself? But it's not a new favourite, and I think it's just because I've got it in my head, well, Jan absolutely loved this, this was her new favourite book, and so I must love this, because generally speaking, books that she really enjoys, I've also really enjoyed, and this one I did enjoy, it's just not a new favourite. So yeah, that's where I left it at, like, I didn't feel compelled to annotate it, like, if I had, there would probably be a couple of lines here and there that I really like, but not enough for me to go, oh, I would annotate this, and I think that's another thing. So this is my third locked library book, and it's the first one that I haven't annotated, that I haven't felt that compulsion. The other two that I've read, one ended up being a standout new favourite read, and the other one, when I read it at the time, I was like, oh, I liked this, I'll probably reread it. But I also haven't stopped thinking about it, like, that stayed with me a lot more than when I initially finished it and how I felt about it. And I feel like this one could potentially do the same, because it was eerie, it was creepy, I would really recommend this for full time, it has that perfect atmosphere for it, it's also got a nice little sapphic romance going on, so there is a lot of things in this book that I really liked. I think I just went in wanting, oh my god, a new favourite, and I got a good book. It was a good book, I don't have anything negative to say about it, but it's also not a new favourite. So yeah, I, I still really enjoyed it, I would still highly recommend this book, especially if you are someone that likes that gothic element in your books, a little bit of horror, a little bit of thriller, this is a good one for it, and you know, it's gorgeous, you know, beautiful. So yeah, I would, I would still recommend this one. I just kind of came out of it thinking, well, what do I say? Because I don't have anything negative to say about it, but it's also not a new all-time favourite, it did the thing it set out to do and it did it well. And that's what I've got to say about it. So yeah, that, that that's it. I really enjoyed it. I mean, all the things I'm pretty sure I've already said in this vlog. The only problem with doing vlogs like this is I have such a long time between updates, I never know what I've already told you. So editing me has a field day cutting this all to pieces. It was, for me, it was the atmosphere. It was that eerie quality to it. Some of the twists and turns I kind of predicted, some I really didn't, and I liked it. It was definitely just the eeriness of it all, and the ending scenes were creepy enough that I was a bit like, oh, I don't want to read that before bed. <laughs> I mean, I am a wuss, so do take what I say with a pinch of salt, but yeah, this was good. I did, however, have the new locked library book turn up, which I was very pleased with. You should have seen an unboxing for that already in one of the weekly vlogs. By the time this comes out, it was a little while ago. Um, but the newest locked library book is And Break the Pretty Kings, and this is by Le Lena Jeong. And this one is Korean mythology inspired, I believe. Oh, it's a debut inspired by the historical three kingdoms of Korea and follows a crown princess's journey to s understand her dark powers and save her realm. It's another gorgeous book. Like, look at those edges. Absolutely stunning. Gorgeous end pages and beautiful foiling with a natural dragon on there. Absolutely stunning. Um, however, I think this, while I do think it's gonna be good, I'm not feeling it 100%. Instead, I'm gonna go with The Valkyrie. So the next book we're gonna read for this video is 
the Valkyrie. And this is by Katie Hartfield and this one is Norse Mythology. It's a lyrical retelling of one of Norse Mythology's greatest epics. Um, and I've been thinking about this one for a while actually. I, I was waiting for my decision to see what this book would be and after reading it, yes, I do want to read it, but I do think I still would rather read this one. So I'm going to read this one next, and then by the time we choose our next book, we should have had another New Lop Library book, so again, we'll choose out of those. But yeah, I'm really excited for this one. I don't know too much what this is about. We're following, it looks like three main characters. We have Brynhild, who is a Valkyrie, shield maiden of the Allfather, chooser of the slain, but now she too has fallen flightless in her exile. And then you have Gudrun, a princess of Burgundy, a daughter of the Rhine, a prize for an invading king, a king whose brothers Attila has other plans and a dragon to call upon. And then in the final one, there we have Sigurd. Sigurd, a warrior with a sword sharper than the new moon. As legends tell, some are destined to be lovers, some fated as enemies, but here on Midgard, legends can be lies. Not all heroes are heroic, not all monsters are monstrous, and a shield maiden may yet find love in the greatest weapon of all. Very excited, this is another gorgeous edition, really like those edges. Just plain end papers, but it goes with the purple of the book, so I don't mind. And under the dust jacket. Stunning, absolutely stunning, really like this one. Oh, I forgot to say actually, the main character in here, Marin, she deals with anxiety. It was this author's way of actually portraying anxiety. She was like, what if we had a main character with crippling anxiety and put her in a horror book? And that's what she did. And it was really funny because in the acknowledgement, she goes, Marin, I'm really sorry I did that to you. But I did just want to say the anxiety rep in here was, I think it was really well done. It was really well explored. Anyway, right, that's it. That's done. We've updated, we've finished one book we know what the next book's going to be and I will of course update when I've actually read some of this. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it should be a good time. It's been a little while since I've read anything that's like mythology inspired so looking forward to it. But yes that is the start. It's not the start. That is the first book done is what I was going to say. One out of three and I did enjoy it. So we haven't actually had a bad book from this subscription box yet so I'm very excited to continue on. Anyway, right, stop rambling. I've got things to do today and I will catch up with you probably in a week to two weeks time. I've read the first part of The Valkyrie, so I'm now up to part two, page 103. I really like how the parts are done with this beautiful papers. Very nice way to break it all up. This is a book that I'm kind of in two minds about. I'm I'm enjoying. At the minute we've got two different perspectives going on. One is the Valkyrie Brynhild. She has fallen from Odin's side due to not doing what he wanted basically. She decided to do her own thing and so he thinks of the worst punishment possible which is to make her a mortal woman. And so she gets sent down onto Midgard aka Earth. And so you see her perspective of things and she's telling her story about what it was like to be a Valkyrie and she's telling her story to the person that she loves, Gundard. I I'm gonna probably butcher the names, I'm so sorry. She gets tangled up with this beast that she has to kill, caught up with a man that then ends up betraying her. I think there's a lot of things like it's quite a feminist book. It's got feminist undertones to the book so you could see this as a surface level retelling of Norse mythology or you can look into it a bit closer and see all the other subtext that's being done about the feminism side of things. The second perspective we get is actually, I feel like I'm mispronouncing her name every single time, Gudrun. Gudrun and her brother, they kind of rule the place that they're staying in, but it's a very shaky rule. And so she decides to help by saying, look, I'll marry this person and that will help strengthen our ties. And it all goes terribly wrong. And you're seeing her perspective on things. I'm looking forward to when they meet up and how it all comes together. It's a really easy story. It's really easy to read. It's not one that I feel myself going, oh, I have to pick it back up straight away. So I'm quite happy to put this down and pick it up every so often, but it is an easy light read. So whereas All the Dead Lie Down was an easy, dark, atmospheric read, this one is just a lighter tale that's being told to us. And it's nice. 
it's okay. I'm not, I think, I'm not connecting loads with it because I don't actually know a lot about Norse mythology, so I'm not really sure what's being retold. It's a nice story nonetheless with, like I say, you can look into it deeper if you wanted to. I was really excited at the start because there was a few lines in here that I was like, oh, I really like this, maybe I'm going to tab the book, but yeah it's been one tab in 100 pages so I don't think I'm going to but one thing that I really liked was one of the lines at the start which says I could fly no longer I was a woman that was my punishment the very worst thing Odin could imagine and that is what I mean by you could pull a lot of subtext of feminism and stuff throughout this book but it doesn't go deep into it I feel like it's there but it doesn't go as deep as I would like. And so this is like a nice light YA read, but it's not got the depth to it that I would have hoped for from having a sentence like that. I was really excited. And the rest of it, like, it's not disappointing. It's just not followed through on that depth. It may in the later parts of this book, but it just hasn't as of yet. So I don't actually have a lot of thoughts about this. I feel like this video isn't going as well as I hoped. It's not that it's bad because I'm enjoying the books that I'm reading compared to the book that wouldn't burn and even the thorns remain. It's that those two were so so good and that's the level I had come to expect and now I'm having two books which I do like. I think I prefer all the dead lie down compared to this one so far just because I love that dark atmospheric tone to it and I honestly upon thinking about it for a few weeks I would reread that book. I did enjoy it. This one I'm not sure if I would reread at the minute, which I know I said about All the Dead Lie Down, but I think because I've had this one to compare and I see All the Dead Read Lie Down as better, I'm like, yeah, okay, I would reread that. I like it. It goes with the spooky and gothic fiction that I really enjoy. This one doesn't have anything that's really pulling me in. It almost did at the start. Like I said, if it went deeper into the feminist exploration of this, I would be there for it, but it hasn't quite done it yet. So I, the jury's still out. This is fine. It's fine. Uh, we'll continue it. I'm probably only going to update when I finish, I think, on this one, because as you can tell, I don't actually have loads of thoughts apart from to say I wish it went and delved into that topic deeper, and then I would have a lot more connection to this book, which is frustrating because I feel like if, if I was to do a star rating, this would be a three star book at the moment. And I don't like three star books because I feel like I've got nothing to say about them. If it was like a book that's a new to all time favourite, so like four to five stars, there's a lot going on, there's a lot to discuss, it's great. It's so easy to talk about either how much I love it or there's certain things going on in a book which I find really interesting and so I've got loads to talk about. Even if it's a book I don't like, so say for instance a two or one star, again I've got things to talk about of why I didn't like the book. I feel like a middle book is just that, it's middle. I don't have a lot of thoughts about it because it's not doing loads for me. Like it's not bad, but it's not doing the amount that I would hope it would do. And so I get left going, it's okay. And that's it. And the thing is, it's not even like I can say to you, like the atmosphere is really good, like it was in All the Dead Lie Down. That was a really atmospheric book. And so I loved it. I loved the spookiness factor of that book. This doesn't even have that. I can say it's good but it's not doing anything for me. So that's that's where we're leaving it as, and I've managed to drag that out for almost 10 minutes with me going, I don't really know what to talk about this book, but it is absolutely gorgeous. I love the foiling on this. I really do. Well, that's that. We're gonna continue reading it. I'll update you when I've finished, and we should be getting a new Lock Library book soon, and then we'll decide between the new one and these, which one is going to be the third and final book for this video. But yes, I don't imagine this one taking me too long to finish because it's so easy to read. So I would like to try and get this finished in the next week or two. I can get this all done in a timely manner. That would be good, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm now rambling. I've actually got one more update to do for my normal weekly vlog, and then I've got food shopping to do and editing and loads of bits going on. So I should probably get on and do all of that stuff and I will catch up with you when I've finished. And you never know, that book could end up really surprising me. Fingers crossed.
If I was to rank all the Lot Library books that I have read, this is probably my least favourite so far. It's not because it's bad, I think the story is good and I think the writing of it was done well. I liked the way that we had our two main character perspectives that we're seeing it from, we're telling each other this story, so you'd have them constantly referencing each other, so you'd have oh Brynhild it was like this or I was doing this while you were doing that and then Brynhild would also go oh Gudrun weird it would it was good I liked the way that this story was done with these two women talking to each other about their story and about the things that went on I think for me the lack of interest is because I'm not a massive person that's interested in Norse mythology a massive person that's it that sentence didn't make sense I don't have a massive interest in Norse mythology. Like, I know of it. Obviously, you've got Loki and Thor and Odin and all these different things, but I don't actually know a lot about it. It's not something I've ever tried reading the original mythology around it all. And I think maybe because I didn't know the mythology of this, maybe that lessened some of my love for it. I don't know. We do have Katie Hartfield that writes at the start of this in a letter but also in the acknowledgements talking about where she got the inspiration from this and she lists the different texts that she references but yeah I think for me it's just Norse mythology isn't my thing and I am in a bit of a mythology reading slump. Not so bad with this one because it wasn't Greek mythology and I've really run myself down with Greek mythology with the amount that I've read back to back so it was good because at least it wasn't Greek mythology but also it was still mythology and I'm not in a massive mood for that but ignoring that I still think I wouldn't have as much of a connection with this book because I don't know the Norse mythology behind it all but it was a good story overall so it's not like a bad read it's just not a book I would necessarily reread I believe I did say how I started to tab I had like one tab going with a line that I really liked and I was hoping that it would kind of continue. That didn't actually happen. That one tap is the only one tap in this book. And there were odd lines throughout this book, but it was more of the same repetitiveness of how Odin thought being a woman was the worst thing possible. But there wasn't much to show that, hey, it's not. Like, don't get me wrong, we have two very strong-willed female characters and they both do things to help their family, they both like make different sacrifices, they both do all these different things, but I think the message was much more about how Odin doesn't like women and sees them as lesser than them proving that actually being a woman is, is awesome. Um, so maybe I just missed that part of it, but for me, I feel like if you're gonna make the message so strong about Odin not liking women, then the message should also be equally as strong with proving that women are the backbone to this, which was kind of the point because we have them as female characters, like they're our main perspectives and stuff, and they're the ones that do kind of keep everything going together, but it also didn't really feel that way like I feel like it kind of got lost at moments and the romance between two characters it was there but it wasn't as present as I thought it was going to be so I feel like this book did it didn't do what I wanted it to do and I don't know if that's because I don't know the mythology or whether it's just because I wanted the author to push the boundaries a bit more. I'm not sure on that one. So, I mean, if you know Norse mythology a bit more, you may enjoy this a bit more. I don't know, I can't really say on that front, but for me, I just feel like it was a good base, but it could have been built upon so much more. The relationship could have been built upon, or you could have had more depth into the messages and the commentary that we were making. Like, it could have just been a little bit more, and that's what I wanted. I wanted more depth. To the book. As it is a surface level story it was fine and I liked the structure of it being told as a story that they're telling each other and I liked how they ended that and I thought the ending was really really lovely I really enjoyed that I just wish I just wish it was delved into a bit more but yeah so that that's that one so my least favorite but not a bad one either it was just wanting more from it. That being said, I haven't actually had my Lot Library book box for August yet. I don't know where that is, but I really want to start the third book for this video, so we're just going to go with one that I've had from June. It was June's pick, and that is The Library of Broken Worlds, and this is by Alea Dawn Johnson. This is a beautiful book, 
as always gorgeous sprayed edges and a gorgeous under the dust jacket now i have heard or seen mixed reviews about this book i haven't actually heard anyone talking about it but i did do a quick look on goodreads and a lot of the reviews were very mixed so let's just do the synopsis and we're going to see what we think i think this is like a sci-fi book which will be good for me because i want to try reading more sci-fi so i'm interested in it and i'm hoping because it's a library based book that i would enjoy it so much more because I love library books and the last lot library book that was about libraries is one of my new favourites of the year. In the winding underground tunnels of the library, the great celestial peacekeeper of the three systems, a terrible secret lies buried. As the daughter of a library god, Freda has spent her whole life exploring the library's ever-changing tunnels and communicating with the gods. Her unparalleled access makes her unique and dangerous. When Frida meets Joshua, a mortal boy desperate to save his people, and Naguri, a disciple from a prosecuted religious minority, Freda is compelled to break ranks with the gods and help them. But in order to do so, she will have to venture deeper into the library than she has ever known. There, she will discover the atrocities of the past, the truth of her origins, and the impossibility of her future. With the world at the brink of war, Freda embarks on a journey to fulfil her destiny, one that pits her against an ancient war god. Her mission is straightforward. Destroy the god before he can rain hellfire upon thousands of innocent lives if he doesn't destroy her first. A girl matches wit with a war god in this kaleidoscopic epic tale of oppression and the cost of peace where stories hide within other stories and the narrative has the power to heal or to burn everything in its past. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a really interesting one. I'm looking forward to seeing how this library and the celestial parts of this all combine together with the different gods. I think it's going to be a really interesting time, although I have heard that this is a rather unique tale and that kaleidoscopic is the word for it. So we're going to see what I think. I really hope that I don't start this and then the next Lock Library book is something that I'm so excited to read and then I'm so disappointed I didn't get a chance to read it for this video. But can't be helped. This is the one that we're going with. I am looking forward to it. And we're just going to see how many pages is this so it's 431 pages long which i don't mind that actually and is there uh -huh, there is a map that is a very interesting map actually and we do also have the letter that we get for the lot library books which i would definitely be reading before i start this but yeah okay we're going to give this one a try see how i like it hopefully i do and then at the end of this video we will rank all the well all the lot libraries the three lot library books that i read for this video and wrap it all up but i have to get this one read first so let's start that so i know i said we we're going to be reading the library of broken worlds however i haven't started this yet and i just received my lot library subscription box so let's unbox this here and then we'll choose between either the mystery book or the Library of Unbroken Worlds as to what one we're going to read next. Normally I read these books on a Sunday and it is Sunday but I'm actually going to be using today to finish off a book for a weekly vlog that would have been out way before this video. Engines of Chaos, I need to know what's happening, I plan on finishing that today. So as I haven't actually started this one yet, figured let's, let's unbox this, choose between the two and then we know what the last book of this video is actually going to be the signature black wrapping paper tissue paper i should say you know what i never know what these books are they do do like a one picture spoiler thing and i can never guess it i never guess what the books are which is a good thing because then it's a surprise but not to the point okay. oh look at that that is a gorgeous edge love that black sprayed edges at the top and bottom beautiful the kingdom is a golden cage by lily inkwood i've not heard of this although this is a little bit folded which is sad we'll sort that out we'll sort that out it's fine okay so i've got no idea what this book is about red end pages that's rather nice rather pretty okay let's see what this actually says oh and we do have our ribbon bookmark which i do like that comes with the books anyway right what does this say okay once upon a time, there was a princess locked in a tower, forced to bend to her father's will. But Celine is no ordinary princess, she has no intention of being a damsel in distress. Celine has a lover, Hugo, whose cunning plan to rescue her is tied up in his own ambition to reclaim the lands and title that are his birthright. If only they can break the spell that binds him to the body of a cat. They will free the kingdom from the grasp of a cruel witch and live happily ever after. 
For the plan to succeed, they must rely on Hugo's cousin, Felipe, to whom Celine must tether herself until Hugo can reclaim his birthright. It's a risk to trust him, but it soon becomes clear that this is the least of their problems because this is a land of shapeshifters, magic and illusion, where nothing is as it seems, even the truth. It's a fairy tale, but not as we know it. I don't know if it's like a fairy tale retelling or if it's just been inspired by a lot of different fairy tales. I'm not really sure. Oh, okay. So it's a retelling of Puss in Boots. Was not expecting that. Says it in the letter that the author wrote for the Lot Library subscription. And yeah, that is not what I expected. Okay, so do we want a Puss in Boots retelling? Which the more I say that out loud, the more cool that sounds. Or a sci-fi library book with gods and stuff. I have no idea. I feel like part of me is still leaning towards a sci-fi because that way it does give the difference. Be nice to have different genres of each thing and as much as the last book I read was mythology that's still a fantasy based book and although this is a Puss in Boots retelling which is awesome that's still a fantasy book so I'm like do I really want to try sci-fi? I tell you what let's read the first line of both and we're going to base it on the first line. Nadi found me in the tunnels where the collected knowledge of humanity burrows underground like an anthill led by an aging queen. Okay, interesting. The kingdom is a golden cage. I'm alone in my chambers at the royal palace yet again, while my fate is being decided in another room. Not gonna lie, neither of those gave loads. You know what, I'm gonna put a picture up on Instagram because I'm not starting this today anyway. So I'm gonna put a picture up on Instagram and whatever one gets the most votes will be the one that I read as the last book of this vlog. That's what we're gonna do because I'm indecisive as hell and I can't decide between these two. So let's do that Instagram poll and the next update, you'll be seeing which one I end up reading. Of the Library of Broken Worlds. I'm on page 67. These aren't chapters. I like they're chapters, but they're not chapter numbers. And even chapters, like, it's not technically. So you get parts in this book which are demonstrated with this kind of, uh, it's not showing up very well, but it's like this cloudy grey background. Um, and those are parts where our main character, Frida, is talking to this god. And it's a god of, like, destruction and war. And so she's talking to the god and she's telling them that they're going to end up killing her. Don't kill her yet. And she's going to tell him a story. Which is fine. And then the subsequent chapter afterwards is a story. And so this book is actually kind of like a series of short stories with this overarching narrative of Frida telling the god stories. So it feels like almost like a retelling of 1001 Nights, is it Arabian Nights, something like that? I haven't actually read that one, but where this king was killing off all of the women that he was having each night until this one person comes along that she volunteered, started telling him stories and it stopped him from being able to kill her by continuing on with these stories. It's very, very similar to that, um, where we have Frida telling these stories. And in the last bit that I just read, the god actually goes, you need to keep telling me stories, otherwise I'm just going to kill you sooner. Like, that's the only thing that's stopping me from killing you. But it's so weird. Like, the, it's really hard to follow. It's almost like a dream. And when I started seeing it as a dreamscape, it was a little bit easier. But even then, I really don't understand what's going on. And I don't know if this is going to be the sort of book where you need to finish the whole thing to understand. But it's really unusual and really confusing. Now I do like weird books, it's something that I've said on my channel an awful lot, but this is a bit too weird for me. We're following Frida who is part AI, part human. First short story was really quite heartbreaking where we have these different beings and she communes within this library which is made up of different gods and goddesses, like they're literally melded together and she can crawl through the tunnels of their bodies, which is really weird. But there are different beings that then come to this library from different like worlds, it seems. None of this is really well explained. It kind of takes for granted that you know all of 
of this stuff, so it's a little bit confusing. And I understand because Frida's telling a god, so the god would know, so Frida wouldn't have to explain it, but also, like, as a reader, you're left, like, what the hell? Yeah, so it's really unusual, and in this one particular one, this person comes down and they do, like, this astral projection, and it equates to what is basically sexual assault, but Frida's like, well, it didn't happen to my body, so it doesn't actually count and stuff, and it's like, she's she's clearly not processing with this very well and it's clearly a hurt that is still with her as she's telling this story so i wasn't expecting that to be in there like it doesn't go into detail but it's definitely what's implied that that's what happened and then it kind of jumps to this different story a few years later and we're meeting this person called joshua who she ends up loving he's researching to argue a treaty because he's from Terra, they, a different race of people or beings called Luna, feel like they have control over Terra, and so he's trying to fight it, but again, because it's short little snippets, you don't actually know all the ins and outs, you're just seeing like a little snapshot story of what happened, and that particular story that we will learn about is just about how Freda ends up cutting her hair, which is really weird, it was like that whole story was just a little snapshot of her life, how she cut her hair. And the next story that we're going into, something that she did to Joshua that she feels really guilty about. The god picks up on it and he's like, well, you must have done something that makes you feel so guilty because her astral projection shows her emotions and it shows guilt or something. Like, again, none of this is fully explained. So now that's the story that she's going to tell is like what she did to make that guilt happen. It's lots of little stories, but the, it means that each chapter is really long because it's actually a short story. So like the next chapter is over 40 pages long. It does have little bits this in the page that separates the page up so you can take a little break there and normally that means it's a time jump or something's happened but again not always explained it's it's a really unusual one like the way the narrative is is really unusual and that I don't mind like I don't mind that I actually like the structure of this being little short stories and hopefully at the end we get this overall picture of what's going on and I like that idea I like also the fact that we have like I said the overall narrative of Freda telling the god these different stories and how none of them really make sense and stuff like that doesn't bother me but what bothers me is this library itself doesn't make sense it is so unusual it that's why i feel like it's a dreamscape because then that would at least make a little bit of sense to me because dreams don't have to make sense like things are so weird and unusual y you don't question it because it's a dream and I feel like that's the only way that this is making any even small part of sense to me because this this doesn't make sense and even the way that people are explained like the names or maybe pronouns Z and Z are used a lot but it's not explained what they are like at the start of this I thought they were separate people Z and Z but they're used in connection to pretty much everyone and so I'm like well are they pronouns do we have different personalities going on do we have like three separate mind states going like i've got no idea what this z and z is that's not really explained i am so baffled i want to like this because it's so unusual and i haven't read a book like it and i like the overall setup of the book but i am baffled and i really couldn't tell you what's going on like i can tell you in each individual short story what the purpose of that short story was and the story it was telling but do I actually understand this world or universe? No, I, I really don't. And I cannot think of it in any other way than this really weird dreamscape. It's, it's unusual. And I feel conflicted because normally I like unusual books, but this I feel like has taken it a bit too far. So I thought we would have a look at some good reach reviews and just see what everyone's saying about this book because it's been out for a little while now i mean i think like a month or so but i am baffled so i just want to see if anything actually makes sense okay so there's only 66 ratings so that's considering it came out in june that's not a lot at all actually only 66 and the average rating is 3.23 which is pretty low to be fair okay so the reviews we've got oof dnf at 30 percent 
Okay, so this is a good one. Let's see. Someone gave it four stars. This was a great YA sci-fi fantasy. Yes to the YA. I immediately thought it was YA from like the first page. It definitely comes across as YA. I love the style of the author's beautiful and descriptive writing style and overall storyline. I struggled at first to get into and visualize the world. It was same. But then I got into it. Overall, it's a good read. Perfect book for those who are like sci-fi interesting there's a one star review that says it's an interesting concept filled with ai yep sci-fi and societal issues societal issues are highlighted a lot with joshua's perspective which we're hearing about yeah that's true so the author does a lot of metaphors on top of metaphors which you need to focus so much on actually understanding the point that we're getting at because there's so much and you, this could just be because I'm finishing up an early shift or well had an early shift at work today and so I'm too tired to try and make sense of all of that but it's true there, there is a lot yeah so yeah pronouns are non-existent and can be quite confusing so Z and Z are like a pronoun that's genderless so I can understand it being genderless but then why do we have Z and Z for genderless because then that makes it really confusing when you're reading and one minute it's going Z turned and then Z spoke. And it's like, is it the same person? Is it different people? I'm really confused. But yeah, this was another DNF as well. A lot of these were just not getting into it. We have a five star review. Let, let's make this our last one. <laughs> and then I'm going to attempt to read more, but we'll see. Okay, so content warning sexual assault yeah that was right at the start low ratings because this book was mismarketed this is billed as ya but in my opinion it reads like adult i i don't know i feel like the way it's written is ya in my opinion um this is not magical library vice books it's more an archive okay so it seems like the people that read lots of sci-fi seem to be okay with this book as someone that doesn't read sci-fi i mean i do read sci-fi i'm starting to read sci-fi so i'm very new yeah so all the reviews are pretty much saying it's weird and some people either really like that or some people really don't so it definitely seems to be a bit of a marmite book because of the sci-fi element of this it's i can't imagine this world unless like I say I put it in like a dreamland and and then I feel like I c it can make a bit more sense but I feel I don't know I feel like I'm gonna try and give this another try we'll read maybe another two chapters of it not tonight because I'm baffled and my brain cells have gone but we'll try and then if if I still don't understand this world or what's going on I think this is gonna be a DNF yeah it, it's oh I don't know <laughs> it's so so unusual um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to attempt to read two more chapters and we'll see how I get on and go from there. If I read, if I like it and read past it, I probably won't update you because I think this video is going to be quite long and I'll just update you when I finish it. If I can't, then I guess the update will be that this ended up being a DNF, which is a shame because it's a beautiful book, absolutely stunning book. And I really like the idea and the concept of this. I am just so confused with what's going on. Okay, let's... Let's try and give this another try. We're now at the end of this vlog and it's a shame to leave it on a bit of a down note but this ended up being a DNF. I think it's like everything I've said, the premise of this was really intriguing and I loved the concept of the world, or worlds I should say, it was just a bit too wacky. Like, I think, what was the word they used here? It's kaleidoscopic and I do think that word really does encapture this book. It was very kaleidoscopic. You know when you look through one of those things, you turn it and it's got all the weird colours and things going on with it? That's what this book is. Those little snapshots really are just so unusual and the world itself, I mean, like I said, it's like a dream but a futuristic dream that I don't understand. As a result, I just... It's frustrating. I might honestly try this again sometime because it was 
really unusual and I do like weird books so maybe this is one that I will keep hold of and try again in future I think maybe give myself a year that's something I might do at the start of 2024 is do a list of books that if I don't read by the end of the year we're going to unhaul them because I have a lot and this will probably be included in that some people are going to absolutely love this book and as we saw in the reviews some people really don't I want to love it but I can't quite get there yet so yeah I'm gonna leave this for now it might help it might be a case of like with Bunny when I first read Bunny I DNF that book I found it really too weird couldn't get into it and then I reread it and well reread the start of it and continued on and it was so good so it might be a case of that where I just need to reread the start of this book and then I might understand it a little bit better we'll see for now enough for this video unfortunately but like I say I do really want to give it another try it's just not at this moment in time so yeah let's do a quick recap so we started off the vlog with all the dead light down and I did really enjoy this one a YA thriller very easy to read and it was spooky and eerie perfect for this time of year I think especially actually right now so today in England is really muggy really overcast but it's also hella hot. So this I feel like is a good one for that because it does take place in summer. I feel like it's summer. I got summer vibes off of it. So it's like a hotter, eerie book, which I enjoyed. So I think this sort of weather where it's overcast and muggy and it works for this book, in my opinion. I really did enjoy it. It was just a fun read and probably my favorite book out of this video. Then we have The Valkyrie and Again, for this one, it was okay. I'm not going to reread it and I didn't fully get everything I wanted. I think it started off really strong with some of those comments about Zeus. Is it Zeus and Odin? Oh my God, it's Norse mythology. Odin, who very much thought that the worst thing that you could be as a woman and a couple of those quotes I really enjoyed at first and I feel like if we had gone more in depth into that side of things, perfect book it would have been really interesting as it was I think if you like Norse mythology then you're going to enjoy this one for me I'm not as interested in Norse mythology and so I didn't get loads from this book it was still an easy read enjoyed it not one I would actually reread but it was good it was decent I just wish like I said it went a bit more in depth into some of those themes and then it would have been so good because I would have loved to have seen how proven them wrong that being a woman is amazing and we're powerful and strong and you know I suppose some people could read this and feel like they got that but I wish it went more in depth and really showed that rather than just being a light thing that was mentioned every so often and then of course the DNF library of broken worlds again I really wanted to like this one everything I just said it's just it didn't quite happen but there we are we've got three books, one I really enjoyed, one that was okay, and one, wait a minute, I've done that the wrong way around, one I've really enjoyed, one that was okay, and one DNF, but I would like to try again at some point because it was so unusual. So there we go, those are the three books I've read for this video. I still have two more lock library books that I haven't actually read yet, one being the Korean mythology inspired book and one being a Puss in Boots retelling. I think with the lock library books they are more YA than anything else. It does say it does a couple of adult books but it's definitely more YA. I think out of all of them I've had two adult books and then the rest have been YA. I would like a bit more of a 50-50 split with that. I think the genres are really good. I like the fact that we've got fantasy, thrillers, sci-fi. I like that. Uh, it's a nice mix of genres but I do wish it was a bit more of a 50-50 split on age range. The editions are gorgeous, really love the editions, and I do think I'm going to carry on with the Lot Library book box subscription for a couple more months. This was kind of a tester video, one, to get the books off my TBR because I don't want them piling up because they are all new releases, but also to decide am I going to continue on with the Lot Library. So far, out of all five Lot Library books I've read, three I've really enjoyed, and then these two as you've seen what we've already said so I think that's pretty good so yeah I, I enjoyed this it was really good I like keeping up with some of the new releases it's not the most hyped releases but they're new releases that I wouldn't have had on my radar otherwise and I really like that about this book box and of course they're gorgeous so you know 
any excuse to have some pretty books. But yeah, I've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and just look into what you're getting with the Lot Library subscription. I mean, like I say, for me, it was mainly just to get them off my TBR. So <laughs> we've done that. We've got three down, which is really good. So I think we're gonna end it there for this video. Let me know if you would read either of these three or if you have read either of them and which one you either liked the most if you've read them or what one you are most interested in reading. Let me know that in the comments below. But I think we're going to leave it here for now because this video is rather long. I'm, I'm in the middle of editing it and it's, it's going to be a longer one. I haven't done a longer vlog in a little while actually so we've finished these books. It's been a good time. I've enjoyed this video and I think we're going to leave it off with maybe just a book stack emoji. Let's go simple and basic. Let's just do a book stack emoji. So if you have made it this far then leave a book stack emoji in the comments below and we're going to leave it there. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment. Those three things really help this channel grow. My social media Media links anyone I've mentioned will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the very next video.